All right, so welcome to another Bitwig uh, device tutorial. So this is the, uh, we're going to talk about the distortion. Now, this device is pretty uh, difficult to understand and it's harder to explain. Not because it's difficult to use, but because we have some technical, you know, terms and knobs and we don't know what they do. Right, so instead of just putting it in complicated words, I'm just going to tell you what they, what they do. Just a very simple words and a very simple explanation. Now, of course, as you know, uh, when we use distortion, what we are doing, we are just adding harmonics or tones on top of the original tone, based on the original tone. So right now I'm going to go to the first track. I'm going to play a sine wave. Maybe you can hear. Yeah, that's the sine wave. So this is the most primitive. And notice that if I'm going to turn off, we just get uh, remove some of the uh, tones we have right there. So by default, everything is kind of off. So we still get a little bit of distortion even if it's off. All right, so if I move this around, of course, we're going to play a different frequency, but I'm going to leave it right here so it's not that annoying. Okay, so what we do with distortion, when we drive the equipment, we add distortion, we are adding harmonics based on the original tone. So if I drive this, we're going to see that we're going to start getting a lot of peaks right here. So we're going to get a much more complex, and of course, it's going to go down, so because it's going to get really loud. If I drive it, you know, we get a much more complex sound because that's what we are adding. We're adding harmonics based on top of the original tone. And of course, since we get more of this, we are going to get an increase in volume. That's why I'm just turning the gain all the way down because if not, it's just too loud. So this is what distortion does. Now, it depends on the distortion that you're uh, using. It will, uh, you know, create the uh, harmonics in a different, uh, very different way. That's why we have uh, very different plugins for distortion. Now, but we, of course, we get one. Now, okay, so what is the point with this? Well, I'm going to go and we're going to start, instead of using the drive, we're going to start all the way here on this on this knob. And we're going to talk about what this does. So I'm going to go right here. I have a synth. And if I play this with this distortion off, that's what we get. All right. So pretty nasty sound. As you can hear, we have, we can see, we have a lot of peaks right here. So the sound is like, you know, that annoying. So we have a lot of peaks, right? A lot of transients and they're really aggressive. So I'm going to go and turn off the, turn on the distortion. And of course, we're going to get more kind of a more of those peaks. Now this Lou, what it's going to do, and I'm going to give you a tiny background uh, in, in amplification, the uh, slow rate, is associated with the changes in amplitude and how fast it's gonna uh, it's gonna react to this. I know it makes no sense. So this control, it will squash everything. Now notice that on this uh, sound we have a lot of transients. So this one will to just remove will kill those transients. So I'm gonna play it again, and I'm gonna go uh, in lower right here. In lower volumes is gonna. It's going to squash the transients. No, notice how the transients will go away. So yeah. So if you go in higher volumes, you're going to get more of the original sound. And then if you go all the way to the left, it's super squashed. Everything is like super squashed. If I go, of course, since we are squashing everything, we get uh, we uh, redu we get a you know uh, a difference in volume. It will reduce the volume because we are just putting everything together. Uh, of course, if you do this, you will need to you know increase the volume just a little bit. But notice that those transients are not there anymore. And actually, I can prove this. I'm gonna go right here and bounce it. So this is the bounce audio of this one with the distortion, of course. And notice the peaks. The peaks are not there anymore. Everything's like much more squashed. So pretty cool. So, all right. So this is what this loo is going to do. It's going to just remove those peaks and make everything super squashed. Now I'm going to go back to the test tone and mute this one. I'm going to go right here and let's see what this loo is going to do with the test tone. It's not going to do much. So if I go right here, we get something when we go in lower, uh, you know, very low. Let me just uh, go up in volume just a little more. But we get something, right? Okay. So now I'm going to go and put this right here and I'm going to turn this off. Now we're going to talk about the DC. So this one is, is next. Now uh, DC, yeah, you have different types of amplification, right? So one of them is going to be direct current. 
So of course this this plugin is emulating what happens on real equipment. So now when you when the sound goes in on a for example when the sound goes in on a class A amplifier, if you're a guitar you know fan, you're gonna know what a class A amplifier is. Just an ampli amplifier. The sound goes through different stages on that amplifier, and then eventually the sound will just come out. Now since the waveform uh, goes uh, in different stages uh, through the amplifier, it's gonna go through different stages. Uh, it will get some imperfections along the way. So one of these stages uh, is going to be the bias, which is going to be the DC bias. Notice that right here at the bottom, it says DC bias. So what you do, the uh, you know the manufacturer or the technician, it will adjust the bias to you know reduce this imperfections and everything we get with maybe a two vamp. And if you own a two vamp, uh, you know that sometimes you need to, you know, of course, uh, take the, the amp to a service uh, and the technician will just adjust the bias. It's one of the uh, tasks uh, tasks that they need to do with the amplifier. So this is what this this is. It will adjust the bias. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, no, I'm getting a little bit technical, but that's okay. So the, the bias, uh, with, with what we care with this plugin, what it will do, it will work just like the SLU, but in a much more subtle way. I'm going to go and play the, play the test tone. I'm going to go maybe put it right here. And notice if I move this, we just get not much, but we do get something right here. But we don't get what we get right here with this loo. We just don't get this. It's very subtle. Now, of course, we are going to get more if we drive the equipment. When we get more harmonics, let me, of course, go down in volume. And we start to go to the uh, DC. Notice that we get a little bit more. All right. All right. So in terms of how this sound it will work pretty much like the slew, but in a much more subtle way. If I play this, I'm going to go this on default. I'm going to go right here to the DC, and we are not going to hear a lot of difference. But notice that those transients are not that, uh, you know, not annoying anymore. So we are pretty much doing the same, we are squashing all of that. And in addition, what it does, it makes the sound sound a little bit more uh, darker. We don't have that brighter sound anymore when we uh, go all the way to the top uh, on DC. Right. So that's what the DC is going to do. All right, so then we have the symmetry option right here. So uh, depends on, on the, the harmonics we get right here, the symmetry will uh, just adjust the amplitude of, uh, of different tones, of, of different uh, harmonics we get right here. That's why it's called symmetry. It's going to adjust the symmetry of all the harmonics we get right here. Let me just show you. I'm going to go to sine wave and, uh, you know, we get our test tone. I've lowered the volume so, you know, we don't get something real annoying. And I'm going to start driving the... Uh, the, the, uh, the equipment. I, I'm saying equipment's just plugging. Just used to use equipment. So of course, you know, we get we get all of this, which is cool. Right. So now look at what happens when we start doing symmetry. Yeah. So notice it's, it's just changing. We get nothing of this we have right here. And if we do, it's going to adjust the amplitude of the ones in between. So in distortion, uh, when you use distortion or saturation, you have even harmonics and odd harmonics. In this case, what it's doing is adjusting uh, one of those. So yeah, pretty simple stuff. Now, of course, we just see the difference right here, but we don't hear the difference. Let's go uh, to the synth. I'm going to go and play uh, play the synth, right? We just get pretty much the same. And if I start driving uh, the synth, let me just go up in volume. You're going to see, you're going to hear that we get a pretty shitty sound. Yeah, and I'm just driving this. All right, so now, of course, it's, it sounds pretty bad. So I'm going to adjust the symmetry to get uh, the other harmonics back, back in. And we are back in business. I'm going to go and lower the volume. 
If you go all the way up, you're gonna get more of this, of course. If you want to chop those transients, now you know that you can use this loo to chop them off. That sounds very squashed. Now if we go all the way to the other to the other side, we are not gonna get much difference. So we'll get more of the other of the other thing. So the symmetry will work depends on, on the sound you're playing. Uh, it will just react different uh, to that because, again, it's just working on top of the harmonics. So it depends on what you're using. Maybe if you use a lonely hat, you're just not going to get a lot of results. Depends on, again, on the sound that you're playing right here and the complexity of the sound. All right, so in conclusion, these four knobs are not that, you know, hard anymore. With this one, we just squash everything and we just chop those transients. The DC will, it's like a very, you know, small version of the slew. We're going to chop those transients again. And then the symmetry will just make the harmonics that are very low a little bit higher. It will just adjust everything. And of course, right here, we're going to drive uh, the plugging. We're going to add more distortion, more harmonics. That's it. That's it. So then, of course, we have uh, this right here in between. Now, of course, right here, we get the uh, visual representation of what, you know, we get, the sound we get after we apply distortion. And you get the this one and this one. So, of course, sometimes when you add distortion, this is going to get pretty noisy, right? So, we get a low pass and you get a high pass. So, this one, what we'll do, it will just make the higher frequencies, it's going to cut them, or you can cut the lower frequencies. So notice that we get just this part, we get just the mids or just the highs. All right, let me just go a little bit less on this one. All right, so of course you just get an EQ. Now, the funny thing, the funny one is gonna be this one. What do we get on this one? Well, this one again is just like an EQ. Now, it depends on what you're doing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the other example. Let me just uh, pause it. I'm gonna go to the test tone. I'm gonna go here, just mute this one, and all right. So I'm gonna go to the test tone. I'm gonna go and play this. I'm gonna go back all the way to the drive. I'm gonna drive it just a little bit more. All right. So why do we get this yellow? So this one is like a boost or cut. Why? Well. Of course, right here, maybe later, uh, depends on what you're using, uh, you're going to get a much more uh, harmonic content right here. So if I go right here and boost this frequency, I'm going to get much more uh, harmonics easily. I don't need to drive it that much to get much more. Just by boosting the uh, essential uh, frequency, I'm just getting distortion, not driving the equipment. So maybe uh, one day, if you're uh, using the distortion, if you're driving and you're just not getting there, just you know, try a little bit less and boost the uh, essential tone just to get a better distortion, right? And again, this depends on what you're going to do. If you're using a snare, you're going to go and boost the frequency where your snare is playing. Same thing with guitars, same thing with any kind of instrument. You're just going to go and boost a little bit of that just to get a little bit more. Same thing, if you have something that you want to remove, you can go all the way down, you just can cut it. Notice that we get pretty much nothing right here. Almost no distortion, no sound, because we are just cutting the essential frequency. All right, so that's why you get that yellow. So you can boost what you want or you can cut what you don't want. All right, just to finish, one more cool thing you get is the wet effects. So this one, what it will do, uh, you can add plugins or whatever uh, whatever plugin you wish, and this one will react, will work on top of the saturated uh, signal, not the original signal. So, for example, if I go and grab a curse, I'm going to go drop it right here, and this curse will react on top of the saturated sound. So if I play it right here, oh, sorry, made a mistake. I wanted to uh, put it right here. All right, so I'm going to go and add a little bit of chorus. I'm going to go and play the sound. Notice it sounds much different. We're just adding a chorusing effect to the distorted sound. And now notice that we are on mix. We are on 100%. So the only thing we are listening is the distorted sound, right? The processed one. So if we go back, we get a little bit of the distortion with the chorus and then more of the original sound. 
Right. So in conclusion, after you know what, what these are and what this does, it's much it's pretty easy to use. You just get the mix control. Let's say that you're gonna play your sound, you want to squash those transients, you use a little bit of slew, maybe it's too aggressive, you go to the DC, you can adjust the symmetry so you don't get that choppy sound. So you adjust the symmetry. If you want to do a little bit less and boost the essential frequency just to get more harmonics, you can do so. You can also adjust the Q so you can make this bell just a little bit wider. Maybe the highs are just too annoying, you can cut them off. You want more of the lows, you just let them pass. Maybe you want a little bit of chorus to make everything sounds bigger, you can. And if you want more width, you can get more width. So once you know the controls, what they do, it's pretty, pretty simple to use and to understand.